Arches National Park contains some of the most incredible natural features in the world and is a must visit for everyone. Arches National Park is located just north of Moab in Utah and has a lot of incredible natural features. There's actually so many structures that there's no way I can cover them all in a video like this, so there will be plenty of opportunity for you to go and explore yourself. The first location on the list is Balanced Rock, which is located relatively in the middle of the park. There's a path going all around it, so it's pretty easy to capture it from all angles. Sadly, when we were in Arches National Park, the moon was waxing, which made the nights pretty bright, so it was hard to make any kind of star photography, and it was even harder to actually capture the Milky Way. While photographing Balanced Rock, we experienced both clear skies and light cloud cover, which I used for some long exposures. In the northern part of the park you will find Devil's Garden. In this area I mainly aimed for the iconic landscape arch. I figured that since the sun was setting just behind it in December it could be cool to capture it during a flaming sunset. To my huge disappointment there is a big cliff wall just behind the arch making it almost impossible to ever catch a sunset there unless you get the completely right clouds and a really strong afterburn. And that's how much pictures on the internet can cheat you. I simply didn't see that there would be this huge cliff wall, and that's because how landscape art is usually photographed, which is around 45 degrees up. Luckily the double O arch was near, so we hiked around a mile to get to this arch. And what do you know, same problem. We got a beautiful sunset, but the arch was partly in shadow and the arch itself is really not that photogenic, and it's hard to find a proper composition compared to the other arches in the park. Safe to say, that evening was a huge disappointment. I knew I did want to get at least one good picture from Landscape Arch. I couldn't get the sunset and I couldn't get a sunburst either because of the time of year. But when life gives you lemons, I did have the moon. So at the right time of the night, I could actually make a moonburst behind the arch. This is actually a very hard thing to capture and get a well-balanced picture at the same time. And that's because the moon is relatively bright compared to the foreground. If you expose for the shadows, you'll probably end up completely overexposing the moon and the moon burst and get flares in the picture. And if you expose for the highlights, you will just end up with a completely black foreground because the moon is as bright as it is. On top of all this, you will have to photograph with a fairly small aperture to get that sunburst effect from the moon. This is counterintuitive to normal night photography where you want as open an aperture to get as much light in as possible. And this means you will need a longer exposure to get the details in the shadows. And all this considered, the moon will still be way too bright if you expose for the shadows. While I was there, I came up with a solution. If I kept the moon in shadow for most of the exposure and let the rotation of the earth reveal the moon in the very, very, very last part of the exposure, I should, in theory, be able to get a well-balanced picture without having to stitch multiple exposures together. Since you will have to expose for a fairly long time, the moon moves fairly long in the sky, so you will have to recompose each time you want to give it a new try. I managed within four or five tries to get the perfect balanced picture.
Delicate Arch is probably the most famous and iconic arch in the entire world, and not without reason. This lonely arch standing on the edge of the mountain rim makes for some amazing photographs, but this location has of course been photographed in almost all possible scenarios, so it's unlikely you will make anything original here. You will most likely not be alone either in high season, but we actually had the entire area to ourselves for the most part beside a few other tourists. Also during high season, bring enough water and a cap to cover the sun on your way back if you go for the sunrise. We went for sunrise and making your way to delicate arch in the dark is a bit hard. Especially when you don't know the trail, so I'll recommend to make the hike in daylight first. The trail is marked, but it's still hard to see the path in the dark. If you go in the dark, be sure to bring a headlamp. I'd say calculate with about 75 minutes from the trailhead. This should give you enough time to scout the area and capture potential clouds lit by the rising sun before sunrise. Many of the arches and other structures in Arches National Park are actually mainly known for being photographed in the light from the rising or setting sun, where the orange light lightens up the orange rock which makes for some outstanding red colors. It is next to nearly impossible to predict if you actually get a good sunset and if you should go for backlit or frontlit and with such big elements in your photos you can't just run to the other side of it if the light changes. So for the three sunsets we had in the park I completely missed being at the right place at the right time. The sunrises on the other hand is a completely other story. The sunrise at Delicate Arch delivered some beautiful clouds lit by the rising sun and I found some great compositions with leading lines. In December when we were there, the light from the sunrise backlits the arch, so you will have to take that into consideration. And since I couldn't do any astrophotography there, I decided to make a composite when I returned home. Even though Delicate Arch is probably the most famous and iconic of all the arches in Arches National Park, I find double arches to be at least as fascinating, if not more. It's located close to the parking lot in an area with a lot of other arches. It's not easy to capture double arches, and to get a good scale of it, be sure to add a human element. The most obvious viewpoint is also the one you get straight in front of it. Just make a Google search for double arches and the first 50 or so pictures is from that exact location. You can spice it a bit up and find some bushes and leading lines as foregrounds. If you want to capture any photos underneath the arches, be sure to bring an ultra wide angle. Even with my 16mm I had to make panoramas when I was underneath the arches. As with other locations during night, the moon lit up the entire area making astrophotography impossible. I did decide to go for some star trails instead though. So when we have waited for around an hour after sunset to photograph the double arches, a huge Japanese photography workshop came by. They hooked the double arches for one and a half hour doing light painting, which kind of pissed off all the other photographers who were there. But as with the theme of this video, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. I decided to use their light show to my benefit and get the arches lit. Shooting with a fairly small aperture, I was able to control the light from all the light painting while still doing my star trails. I would then be able to blend it all together in Photoshop later. And on top of all this, the sweet Japanese photographer beginners seemed to forget that they had a headlamp on. So while they were leaving the double arches, they were blinding each other and everything around them. Now this is of course not to complain, I just thought it was a fun story to share with you all. And I've actually kinda ended up liking the picture.
Arches National Park is a phenomenal national park and there's so much more to explore than what I've presented in this video. Park Avenue and the courthouse towers, the entire window section, the petrified dunes, fiery furnace and the entire Devil's Garden section, just to name a few. Arches is a must-see national park and whether or not you're into photography, it comes highly recommended from my side. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this episode. As usual, I would appreciate a like and a comment. And if you have yet to see the interview I did with Paul from Photography TV, you can check it out in the link here. In the next episode, we'll go to another world-famous location close to Moab, Mesa Arch.